Hello, and welcome to the Hello You Show, where we talk about big dreams and taking real action. Through transformative stories, a bit of neuroscience, and real conversations, this show is here to help you explore creating your next level life with authenticity and passion. I'm Jessica Rice, a design techie and former engineering leader turned vision evolution coach on a mission to help other women rise up and lead a life of purpose. So get cozy and say hello again to the real you. Hello, and welcome back to the Hello You Show. My name is Jessica Rice, and I am your host. Today, we're going to be talking about how we can really plan strategically how we continue to rise up in our careers and our leadership. One of the biggest fallacies that I hear oftentimes from from leaders, but a lot of times from women, is the questioning of our value. And we start to wonder what it is that we truly bring. And this can cloud our judgment. It takes over our mindset and our ability to really think logically about how we can create a sustainable path forward. If you follow me on social media, you'll know that I posted about this earlier this week where I was talking about how when my son was about three years old, I had been really working hard to rise up in my career, prove myself. I had been given a really large project and I was heading it up and I was the key developer and designer that I, that was leading the charge on, on this initiative. And there was a lot of press behind it. And it was adding a lot of anxiety and worry and stress because I wanted to show what I could do and my value and all of the things that we as leaders, especially when we're coming up in our careers, are pushing so hard on. And I remember I had been working a lot of nights, a lot of weekends, trying to meet the finish line. They had a deadline and we were all pushing hard to meet it. And so I was working again another weekend and our internet went out. I got over down to Starbucks. I took my three-year-old son with me because at that time he kind of went with me to a lot of places. I didn't always have uh, someone to, to take care of him. And so we went to Starbucks and we packed up all of his things and we're there. And then the internet again is giving me a lot of trouble. I can't log into our intranet. Nothing is really working. And so then out of frustration, I pack our things up again and I decide that we're going to drive 45 minutes to go into the office. Now, had I had some of the clarity that I have today, I think that I would have chosen a different path. Number one, I would have had better boundaries for myself. And I would have also understood that me working all of those extra hours was only moving the needle so far because at that point, my brain wasn't really tapping into its creative genius, that innovation, that spark that we sometimes need in order to truly do great work. So what happened as we were driving in, I became distracted. I was listening to, I think there was a meeting that was going on. I was getting messages from my boss and I was looking at them coming in through Teams and not even realizing what I'm doing here. We were driving on a back road trying to avoid traffic and the car in front of me came to a complete full stop. And luckily I happened to look up right at that moment. I was able to swerve just enough I lost control a little bit of the car, but there happened to be a neighborhood or a residential neighborhood that I was able to turn into off of this road and and then regain control and then pull over to the side. But it was so scary because, you know, we nearly got into a major car accident. I hadn't even noticed that the cars had been lined up, backed up in traffic. And I looked at my son and I could see like he seemed, you know, he seemed scared, but he didn't really know what was fully happening happening. And I just started to cry. I lost it because I realized, you know, what, what am I doing? Why am I so not even thinking correctly? Why am I looking at messages while I'm driving? Why am I putting our lives at jeopardy? Now that was a turning point for me. I ended up still working that weekend. So I didn't fully get the the full picture. I still ended up going into the office, but again, Knowing what I know now, having gone through certifications and and studying neuroscience, 
it's become so much clearer to me when I'm talking to clients that we take for granted our human qualities. We take for granted the fact that we have this amazing brain, this so genius, creative, inspired, innovative brain. But just like anything else, it needs to be tended to. Now, before I get into that a little bit, I wanted to say, I think sometimes too, when I'm talking to women, there is a lack of clarity because we have now been trying to, to rise up and get our seat at the table. And because we haven't had that seat at the table, there has been this illusion of a lack of value that we bring. And it creates an immense amount of self-doubt. Now, as we start to become more empowered, the veil is starting to lift before us. But more often than I hear from men, I'm hearing women tell me in calls that they struggle with guilt, with anxiety, with worry about not providing enough value in their organization. And so when I suggest taking a break, giving themselves a mental break, giving themselves a boundary, creating the space necessary to do the important work, to think. What automatically starts to come up is a lack of value, is a feeling that they couldn't do that because how would they then prove themselves? They need to be working every single minute. Now, I have a lot of male clients who, who also express a lack of time, overwhelm, stress, but it doesn't show up in the same way. Oftentimes it is due to a lack of try time. We're trying to create boundaries. They feel the expectation, but it doesn't get presented in the same way where they're not providing enough value. They don't have enough worth in the company. So they're not working to the bone that they're going to lose their jobs. So I wanted to, to bring this up because I think it's incredibly important that we consider what our sustainability limits are. Do we even know? I had another client this morning who I was talking to about the fact that sleep is one of the most crucial things that we can do as humans to be productive, to be at peak performance. And yet it's one of the things that we sacrifice the most. I'm sure we've all heard that saying, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And we had a chuckle around it because Sadly, that is the recipe to having a shorter life. So if we think about the importance of our lives, of how we show up and how we can truly be the best leaders, the best people for our teams, high performers within our companies, then we need to create sustainability plans. We need to be strategic about our leadership, how we show up, when we're given more than we can handle, especially when we're starting to feel like maybe we're at a tipping point, maybe we're starting to take on way too much, and we're starting to question if this, if this could keep going, and we don't really have an end in sight, that is the time when we have to really rise up and start to think strategically. Now, many times we discount this ability of ourselves because we put barriers and blockers in place stating that we simply couldn't do some of the things that we feel would help us. And yet that's what companies need. That's what they need is the honesty and the ability for you to explain what will help you to be the most successful, what will help the team to be the most successful. It may not be fully everything they want to hear, but then that's where we come up with solutions. Are there opportunities for you to delegate? Are there opportunities for you to position other team members into key roles? Are there opportunities for you to reduce work in certain areas so that you can increase work in other areas. We have a fallacy that we can take it all on and we can just do it all. And in fact, I used to definitely be one of those people and I would until I slowly started to go down to a crawl in burnout. And I think it's incredibly important that we really think about where do I want to be in the next several months? 
we as leaders have to be strategic for the long game, not just the short term gain. And why am I mashing all of this together? Because I think sometimes, especially as women, we can discount our strategic mind. We can start to discount and second guess and question our decision making capabilities. And because we tend to do this, where we pick on way too much and we think that we need to carry the load, not only for our jobs, but potentially for our families, whether it's with children, whether it's with our parents, whether it's with friends, sometimes we end up taking on way more and we put ourselves last. But we're not capable then of the same type of logic and thinking that's required for us to do our roles most effectively to maximum capacity. Now, if you look at a pro athlete, they're going to do strength and conditioning, but then they're going to plan in time for recovery. Pro athletes, people who are excelling at the peak performance of the world, why is it then that we as leaders think that we can somehow get by by not doing that? Why do we assume that we don't need proper rest, proper nutrition, proper physical health, and doing the things necessary so that we can activate our mind in the greatest way, so that we can wake up the next day ready to go? We as women start to create these healthy boundaries for ourselves, start to create appropriate expectations so that we can perform optimally in every aspect of our lives so that we can be walking fully in our genius, in our strength and enjoy. So many women are struggling with just having joy in their lives because they're looking at the ambition of pushing forward on their career, improving themselves. And then we forget about actually, where's the enjoyment of this? Where's the excitement of it? And when we're thinking about, you know, what's the light at the end of the tunnel? What is the road ahead? Sometimes our company isn't going to provide that for us. And so we have to provide it for ourselves. We have to be strategic for ourselves and for the company so that Everyone can be successful. The company isn't going to succeed if everyone is burnt out. As much as we like to pretend and think that that's going to be the way, if we just work people, as Simon Sinek says, you know, we can't wring them out. They're not a towel. Well, we're not towels. What we are, we're incredibly inventive, creative beings who operate in our superhuman power only comes forth when we provide it the right conditions. That's what separates us from a machine. And the same thing is that we can program ourselves then to have that next level innovation and thought leadership and all of the things that humans excel in doing. So we need to provide that for ourselves, advocate for ourselves, and be strategic about how we show up as leaders in our industries. I really had this on my heart today because I've heard from more women than I can count the number of times that they second guess themselves or they question pushing back or challenging their boss or asking that they offload something or that they help ask for help from someone else to pull into their team. When in reality, it's the only way to be successful because we can't take it all on. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please let me know. Please reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn at Jessica Carl Rice. You can find me on my website at Jessica Rice Coaching. Reach out. Let me know in the DMs or the comments. What are your thoughts around strategic leadership and how you create a long game plan of sustainability for yourself? I'd love to hear. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for tuning in to the Hello You Show. It's been a pleasure to have you with us on this journey today. If you found value in our conversation and want to support the show, 
please take a moment to like, follow, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. We'd also deeply appreciate it if you could leave us a review. Your feedback not only helps us grow, but also enables others seeking inspiration and authenticity to discover our community. Until next time, keep embracing your story with purpose.